Now let's look at this figure 21-11 that uh, basically deals with a flashpoint uh, and defined in uh, NFPA 497 3.3.7 but basically if a liquid is heated up it gives off a vapor and if it gives off enough vapor right more especially about right, what's giving it off, as you see in the illustration, it can get into a mixture with air that's in an explosive range. Now, uh, we we kind of get the flash point of any type of liquid, gas, or vapor in NFPA 4.4.2 of NFPA 497. We can go over and pick that up. But, but notice it's very... Uh, it has a very uh, quick flash point where it gathers right where the opening is. For example, if you're in a gas uh, station, uh, you know, that's why they, when you fill your car up with gas in the summertime, you, you know, vapor's coming out of there. It's very explosive right there, see, during the summer. Or they have, used to have, uh, like Shell, for example. I'll just name them because they come to mind. But they had a gas where you would uh, push it in, and it had a, a, a outer uh, a type of uh, tubing that would uh, keep the vapors inside the tank. It wouldn't let it out, and they felt like that provided a greater margin, a margin of protection when uh, someone was filling uh, their gas tank with gas. You don't see that much anymore, but one at a time you did. Or if you had a gas can that you put in your garage and you took the lid off uh, and left the lid off, or that heat in the garage is hot, it heat that liquid up, gas, and right there at the uh, opening, vapor would gather and it's, it, it would be very explosive right there, a burn right there, so just to any kind of arc or spark. Uh, but... But if you took a wash tub and filled it up with gas and you sitting in there uh, cleaning parts or whatever from your car and so forth, then see, you got a wide opening there. A lot of vapor can escape due to the heat, just like you see in the illustration. Now, we used to do a, a lot of design work for Package Incorporated, and they had these uh, tanks, dip tanks and vessels, as you see, uh, in their facility in one, one of the Bay Areas. And it was so cold there, uh, they kept it real cool with air conditioning so that that liquid you see in the illustration wouldn't heat up because it, it, it was so cold in there. And everybody working there wore sweaters during the summer, wore a little light coat, you know, to just to keep warm in there. And, and the ladies especially, you know, uh, dressed... Uh, almost like it was winter outside because of how cool they kept it there. So they wanted to keep that vapor settled, uh, not leaving the liquid and, and forming a vapor cloud like you see in that illustration. And so uh, we basically want to keep that uh, uh, vapor below the upper and lower flammable limits. So you want to keep it below the uh, flammable limit. So you do that by keeping the area cool so the vapor doesn't heat up and give, or should say the liquid heat up and give off vapor. Uh, so you want to keep it cool or you want to use ventilation. So to meet uh, NFPA 30 and NFPA 497 for ventilation, you would take 25% of the uh, lower flammable limits of the liquid, so uh, or gas or vapor, whatever it may be, and you can find that based upon any liquid, gas, or vapor in NFPA 497 uh, when you uh, review uh, Table 4.4.2 that you would want to review there. So uh, this is when you're dealing uh, with Flashpoint. And you can find a, a lot of detailed information in uh, NFPA 497 5.5.1 that you see listed in the note in the illustration 
in figure 21-11. So uh, basically that's, that's what uh, this figure 21-11 is dealing with is flashpoint along with the text and the illustration uh, and designers and uh, inst installers can use this figure uh, 21-11 along with the text and uh, it would uh, go through requirements uh, using the NEC and then go over to NFPA 497 for more detailed information. And that's what this illustration is illustrating.